Hello and welcome to today's lecture. Today we will uh, start our journey into the world of commutative algebra and algebraic geometry by covering some of the basics. So in the beginning we'll go through some concepts that you have seen before and you're expected to know and then we will add some uh, new notions of commutative algebra and take a first glimpse into affine varieties. So let's get started. The first basic notion and the main notion from algebra is that of a ring. So remember that a ring is a set R with two operations, addition and multiplication, that are compatible with each other in reasonable ways and satisfy axioms that you would expect. So with respect to addition, this is an abelian group. Addition is commutative. Uh, multiplication here, uh, I will write it uh, using juxtaposition. So instead of this dot, whenever we want to write a product, we just simply write x, y. Now, we will not uh, look at arbitrary rings in this course but we will require them to be unital, meaning that they have a unity element with a neutral element with respect to the multiplication that satisfies one times R equals R times one equals R for all R. And we also require the multiplication to be commutative. So uh, the main rings that we will have in uh, mind will be polynomial rings in several variables over some field K with um, together with their sub rings and quotient rings and all that and these are all commutative and when we look at homomorphisms of rings we will require them to respect unity so uh, remember a homomorphism of rings is already required to satisfy or to be compatible with addition and multiplication. And now we also require it to be unital. So uh, for those of you who want to view this from a category point of view, we will be working in the category of unital rings, where the morphisms are morphisms of unital rings. So the most important um, piece of a ring or the most important pieces of rings in algebraic geometry are their ideals. So an ideal of a commutative unital ring is an additive subgroup of the, well, additive group of the ring. That, so it's closed under addition and with the additional property that it's closed under multiplication with any element from the ring. Now, this is important that we allow ourselves to multiply elements in the ideal with any element from the ring, and so it sucks somehow the ring into the ideal. And uh, later in the course, we will look at modules over rings. So a module over a ring is simply an abelian group with a compatible action of the ring. For example, any ideal is an R module with, so the ring acts on itself by multiplication. And because we require ideals to be closed under multiplication with any element of the ring, uh, this will make it into a module. Now, from previous courses in algebra, you might have heard such uh, words as left ideal, right ideal, left module, right module. But remember that all the rings we consider are commutative, so all these things are one and the same. We will write the action on ideals and modules to the right or to the left as we wish. It's the same thing. Okay, so from now on, whenever I write the capital letter R, I refer to a unital commutative ring. And the unity will always be denoted the number one. And so one particular kind of ring is the zero ring. That's the ring consisting of only one element. And it is characterized by the property that one is equal to zero. So if in a ring 
one is equal to zero, then it is the zero ring, and in all other rings, one is different from zero. Uh, particularly nice rings are integral domains. So an integral domain is a non-zero ring that has no zero divisors. This means that whenever a product of two elements is zero, then one or the other element is equal to zero. And a ring is called field if it is not the zero ring, and if every non-zero element has a multiplicative inverse. In particular, this implies that fields are integral domains. And the fields you have seen, such as the rational numbers, the real numbers, the complex numbers, come in different flavors. What we want are algebraically closed fields. A field is called algebraically closed if it has no proper algebraic extension. An equivalent way of saying this that will be the most important for us is that any non-constant polynomial over this field has a root in this field. So the fundamental theorem of algebra applies in this field. This is again equivalent to saying that any non-constant polynomial can be factored into linear factors. Now let's look a bit more at what kinds of ideals we will deal with. Prime ideals are the ideals that will be most of interest to us throughout the course, even when we get into schemes at the end. So an ideal that is different from the ring. So first, uh, um, a word about notation. When I write that a set X is included in a set Y, this might be equality. I, I do not use this notation. Rather, I use this notation if I want to emphasize that it is not equal to y. But just inclusion means that it may or may not be the whole set. So an ideal different from the ring itself is called a prime ideal. If whenever you have a product included in the ideal, then either one or the other element or both are in the ideal. So the prototypical example is if you take as your ring the integers and you take p the ideal generated of some prime. So the ideal pk where k is an integer and this is some prime. And so this is then just the definition, one of the definitions of a prime number, more or less, that uh, if the prime number divides a product, it will divide one or the other. So multiples of three satisfy this property, but multiples of six don't. So uh, one way to rephrase the condition that a ring is an integral domain is to say that the zero ideal is a prime ideal. This condition then just says that a b equals zero implies a equals zero or b equals zero, which is exactly the lack of zero divisors. And more generally, if you take any ring and you take an ideal, then this ideal is prime if and only if the quotient ring is an integral domain. Let me briefly remind you about quotient rings. So if you have j in R an ideal, by the way, this is sometimes written at, using this symbol, means ideal in. But anyway, then you can define an equivalence relation by setting x equivalent to y, if and only if x minus y belongs to the ideal. So it's sort of equivalence modulo this ideal, equality modulo this ideal. And then equivalence classes. form a ring, and this is the ring we denote R mod J, with the addition and multiplication induced from those of the ring. And the philosophy of quotient rings is, of course, that you are quotienting away uh, the ideal. So they shouldn't really be called 
wash entrings, they should be called remainder rings. So you look at remainders modulo this ideal. And um, R mod P means that you set P somehow equal to zero. You force P to be zero in that ring. And then um, P is prime, well, um, P being prime uh, reduces to the zero ring, the zero ideal in the quotient ring being a prime ideal. And that's exactly the condition to be an integral domain. More important for us now than prime ideals will be maximal ideals. So to skip a bit ahead, prime ideals will be uh, corresponding to points of schemes and points will not necessarily be closed. But in the beginning, we will stay with varieties and more concrete uh, geometric spaces where all points are closed. All these definitions will come later. But what I want to say is that closed points will be uh, corresponding to maximal ideals. So what's a maximal ideal? Well, it's an ideal that is maximal. It's an ideal that's not the whole ring, but such that there is no intermediate ideal between itself and the ring. And we have a similar proposition. So now uh, the zero ideal being maximal corresponds to the fact that R is a field. Yeah, what does it mean that the zero ideal is maximal? It simply means there are no ideals except for the zero ideal and the ring itself. And that is one of the uh, properties of field, characteristic properties of a field. And arguing just as above, you can generalize this to saying that if you have a ring, then an ideal in that ring is maximal if and only if the quotient by this ideal is a field. And so in particular, every maximal ideal is a prime ideal. A bit uh, one way to uh, prove this, maybe a silly way, is to say that, look, if the ideal is maximal, then quotienting by it will give you a field, in particular, an integral domain, so the ideal is prime. But this is a roundabout way of doing things. If you write out all the steps, it's quicker to just prove directly that every maximal ideal is prime. Now, ideals uh, will be often given as generated by some set. So what does this mean? It's the same idea of generators in any branch of mathematics, really. So given a family, finite or infinite, of elements in your ring R, we will denote by parentheses around this family the ideal generated by S. So this is the set of all sums of all products of elements from this family with elements in the ring. But as usual, when we deal with potentially infinite things, since we do not have a notion of convergence, we have to require that almost all R, I are equal to zero. This means all but finitely many. So that we can sum. And this is the algebraic way of dealing with infinity. We don't. Um, so you can check that this is an ideal. It's the ideal generated by the set S. And it's the smallest ideal of R containing S because we have only added to S the things that are necessary to close it uh, with respect to addition and multiplication with general elements. So uh, the ideals that will be the nicest and the most interesting ones to us are the finitely generated ideals. So this is when they, there is a finite set such that the ideal is generated by this set. And then we write simply parentheses around the elements without set brackets. And uh, note that the set of generators can in general be chosen in many ways. You know, in uh, there is no uniqueness statement about the generators. It's just that there exist elements, these elements, a1 to the n, that are finitely many and generate this ideal. And a very special case of a finitely generated ideal is a principal ideal. So a principal ideal is an ideal generated by one element. And we write it in this fashion.
And so this concludes the most basic notions from algebra that we need to start working.